Hello friends, welcome to today's podcast. So today we'll be discussing that concept of marketing. We all think that we know marketing. We see marketing in terms of advertisement. When it, whenever we are getting a feed on our social media like Facebook or YouTube, any advertisement, we generally tend to think the marketing is all about advertisement. Yes, to some extent it is true, but then there is a whole complete new dimension to the marketing. So that we'll be discussing in later chapters. But today we'll be discussing only the fundamental concepts of marketing, starting with what market actually is, and what is the need and the want, and how this need and wants they create a market, and then we'll be exploring the different kinds of markets that are available in general. So starting with the definition of market, you know, in general, whenever you hear the term market, you tend to understand that. market is a physical location a place where many shops are there and that is what a traditional market we all feel so what happen in a market is many shops are there and whenever let us say you want to purchase a specific product then you go to the market and then you go to the specific shop where the product is available then you pay some money to the shop and then you purchase the product so what is actually happening here is there are buyers whose shops are there there are sellers whose shops are there and there are buyers who are actually the consumers of the product so if you see the definition comes from of the market from the place it is a place where many buyers and sellers they are gathered to buy and sell the goods so the buyer will buy the good and the seller will sell the good so this is what traditionally a market is known as so what actually happens here is there is a transaction or the exchange that is happening between the buyer and the seller so the seller will be exchanging his product and buyer will be taking that product by giving some specific amount for that product so an exchange of a value is happening in terms of value if you see from the buyer side he is actually getting the product so that is a value that he is getting whereas from the seller perspective he is actually getting the money that the buyer is intended to pay for that product so seller is getting the money whereas the buyer is getting the product but from the value generation if you see money is also having a value as well as the product is also having the value so if you see the fundamentally what is happening is a exchange of value is actually happening so the exchange is happening so this is very essential to understand a market is a place where exchange happens exchange of value for the products and services we'll be discussing services later in detail so the fundamental idea of market is the concept of exchange and then when we try to understand the marketing then we need to understand that the exchange is very essential for the marketing how exchange actually takes place and what are the different concepts for exchange is essential for us to be a good marketer so if you talk about the exchange there are some certain conditions that are to be satisfied like for example you know at least there have to be two people or the two parties need to be there like a buyer has to be there and a seller has to be there so these two parties are essential at least one buyer at least one seller so two parties two parties must be there and then apart from that there as i have said that a value exchange happens so each of the party they need to have some value that they can offer to the other party so that is also essential and the third thing is in the process of come in the process of exchange what is actually happening is each party is communicating to the other and at the same time they are delivering the value of the product or the money so these three things are essential two parties should be there and they should be providing the value to each other and also they need to communicate to each other regarding the product and also what they are delivering so these are some of the fundamental concepts for knowing the exchange then moving ahead to the market as we know traditionally a market is a place where the buyers and sellers are there but then what are the different types of buyers and sellers accordingly you know market can be categorized into basically four types they are the consumer markets the business markets the global markets and the non profit or the government markets let us start with the consumer market consumer market is basically a place where companies are selling their products to an end customer like small examples are a cosmetic shoes pen drive laptops 
like these are the consumer products and then if if a market is there where these type of products are sold where the company is directly selling the mask mass consumer goods to the customer then these are the consumer markets this is the general consumer market which we all know and those are the consumer markets next is the business markets for example you know let us say you are a business owner who is actually manufacturing a laptop then for manufacturing the laptop what you need is the raw materials like you need to have the keyboard mouse you need to have the motherboard and the processors so these are the raw materials that you need for manufacturing the laptop and then this laptop is used by the customers but then you are a manufacturer so you yourself are a business entity but then you need these raw materials like keyboard and other things so you need to purchase it from another seller or another business so those business will give the raw materials to your business and then using those raw materials you will be actually creating a product and then you will be selling to the end consumer so what is happening here is there is a transaction or the exchange happening between the two businesses one business who is actually selling the raw products raw materials to you and then you are then finally assembling that and then you are selling that final product to another customer so you are also business so uh, exchange or marketplace where the exchange is happening between the two businesses then such type of market is known as a business market next moving ahead to the global market you know we all know market is a physical place yes we have understood but then now as the technology is advancing and with the help of internet you know nowadays any person can sell in any country or anywhere in the world so now the geographical boundaries are no more existent you can sell the product to anywhere the entire world is a market so it has the markets are expanding globally so such type of marketplace where you can sell your product anywhere in the world then such idea is a global market now moving to the fourth market which is a non profit or the global markets you know many of the governments they perform there whenever they want to have some service taken from some other other businesses then what they do is they will actually release a tender or they will release a bids and then all the bids or the contractors or the manufacturers they will participate in that bid and whoever bids higher or lower then accordingly the government will allot that work to be executed by that contractor so what is happening is government is actually creating a scenario where many other businesses can participate within the limitation which is given by the government so this is also a market for the other contractors or the business people since it is governed by the government and government is directly dealing in this then such type of markets are known as the government markets some of the other classical examples are also non profit organizations where actually they are their motto is not profit but then giving a public service or the social service so these are the four types of markets next moving to the fundamentals of market you know when it comes to human beings you know human beings have many basic requirements like food water clothing and shelter these are the basic needs that a human being needs in order to survive so these are the needs and nowadays also if you see every person needs to get educated they want to have the entertainment so then these are also now strongly nowadays are can be categorized into needs then what happens is these needs will become a want when they have a specific objects for example let us say i want to get entertained then what i need to have is i need to have the if i have the availability of internet and let us say i have the availability of youtube then i can get myself entertained so my need is entertainment and then if i want to access the youtube and i have the availability of youtube then that my need is converted into a want so that is how want will generate from the need so wants are nothing but they those are the needs that are actually directed to specific objects that might satisfy the need so here what is happening is youtube is a platform which is giving the entertainment my need is that i want to get entertained and youtube is a place where i am getting entertained so my need of getting entertained is being satisfied is able to satisfy by the 
product of YouTube. So I have the YouTube available. So now I have the want. So I want to access the YouTube so that I can get entertained. So these are the wants which are actually the needs. When, whenever a need is having a solution or they have a place to be satisfied, then those needs are converted into wants. So next is the concept of demand. We all know demand. So demands are basically, these are the wants for the specific products. Then and also we need to have the ability to pay for the product. Let us say I have the want of getting entertained by YouTube. Then let us say YouTube is not free and I have to pay some subscription to that. Then what will happen is YouTube knows that subscribers will come and then pay the amount. So then there is a demand for that YouTube subscription model. You know, so customers are actually paying the money for satisfying their wants that they want to get entertained. So this is nothing but the demand because the end customer is actually willing to pay the amount for the subscription model of the YouTube. So demand is nothing but a want which are having, which are actually having a ability to pay from the customer. A customer is having the amount only then these wants can be converted into demands. So that is why we say in the market, you know, if there is a demand for a specific product, then it is always important to know that whether the customer is having the ability to pay is very essential in order to understand the demand. You know, there are many types of demands are there. Like for example, you know, like a negative demand. Let us say there is a product that is lying, means that they are in the market. But then consumer don't want to purchase that product or they don't like to pay for the product. Then such type of demand is a negative demand. Whereas a product is there and then everybody wants to take, then such type of demand for the product is nothing but a full demand. Let us say, let us take example of GeoSIM. You know, we all want to have GeoSIM so that we can access the internet. So there's a full demand for the GeoSIMs. Likewise, if at all, let's say earlier days, Tata Docomo used to be there or nobody wants to take the Tata Docomo SIM, then there's a no demand for that. Then such type of demand is a negative demand. So all the time, every demand is always have to be backed by the ability to pay by the customer. So customers should also have an interest to purchase the product and also it has, it needs to have the ability to pay for getting that product or the service. So this is essential for knowing the demand. Next, we have discussed about the product. Apart from the product, you know, there are certain examples, like example of a service is, let us say if I want to stay over a night in a hotel, then what I will do, I will pay some specific amount for getting that room for one night and then I will pay the amount, I will stay in the room and then next day I will check out from the room. So what is happening is I am not purchasing the entire hotel, whereas I am just utilizing the hotel for one day by paying some amount. So this type of transaction or the exchange is a service. I'm not actually purchasing the product. It's a form of a service. So service is differ from the product is that you actually don't own the product, whereas but we are utilizing it for some temporary usage. Such type of services are there, like airlines, hotels, travel, so many things are there where you actually don't own the product but you are actually utilizing that for some specific purposes that they are serving you for your own use. So this, these are the two types of things that are essential. One is a product and another is a service. Now we have understood that many important basics of the marketing. Now we will actually go to the definition of marketing. If you see the American Marketing Association, they have given a formal definition of marketing where they say, Marketing is an activity which is a set of institutions and then a processes for creating, communicating, delivering and exchange offering that have value for customer, clients, partners and society at large. So what they say is marketing is basically an activity and that activity is carried out by a set of institutions where either here the set of institution is a government or the shop owners or a market and then what they are doing is they are having a process where they will create a product, then they communicate to the customer, consumer, then they deliver the product. And how they deliver is by the concept of exchange. Exchange is happening. 
exchange of value value for whom value for the customers or the clients so if you see the definition of marketing by the american marketing association it is very clear what we have discussed in the beginning of this session that marketing is a place where the exchange happens and the exchange is happening for the value the value is getting both by the customer and also by the means the buyer and also the seller so if we have like this session of mine on the marketing hit like on the button and then you can comment your ideas on this and if you want to have a thorough text of this session then you can click on the link on the which is there in the description so that all these definitions which i have discussed have been taken from the book which is the marketing and customer relation management and especially useful for the people who are preparing for the dfccl exams for the operations and business development post